MLB DFS picks, June 27th, Thursday evening slate. Pretty straightforward. You're playing Jack Flaherty. His stats are amazing this year. 263x Woba. His skills interactive ERA is a 240. 292 ERA. Look, a 33% K rate and only walking 4% of batters. That is absolutely elite. 14% swinging strike rate. He also has a pretty strong called strike rate, especially deep in account. Talk about that in a second. And then, as if it's not enough already, a 45% ground ball rate. And he draws a pretty good matchup against the Angels who strike out 23% of the time. Below average power. Below average WOBA. Below average WRC plus versus right-handed pitching. And just as cold of late in his last game, eight strikeouts in five and two-thirds. Only allows one on run. So what's the story on Mr. Flaherty? Well, he switched teams and he's become a different person. And it's not just a change of scenery. Yes, it is a new team in Detroit, but now he's working with a different coaching staff, different trainers, people that are helping him develop differently, and it has worked out for him. His K percentage has increased 10.6%. That is the highest in the majors. And if you look at the other pitchers in MLB who have experienced the same phenomenon, they've all switched teams. They go to new places, and new guys help them develop differently. There's a great fan vet graphs article that talks about Flaherty's breakout season. Uh, they create a new stat called KGB plus, which is basically pitchers that strike out batters and also get ground ball. Uh, so it's basically the perfect mix. And he's at the top of that leaderboard. One of the things that they know with him, it's not necessarily an increase in velocity in his fastball, but some late movement on his fastball. And he's generating cult strikes late in the count. Against the Angels, really don't need to overthink it. Carlos, last two games have not been good for him. He gave up three home runs in his last outing. But if we look him up before that, he was pitching well. Not an easy matchup against Kansas City, 20 fantasy points. Not an easy matchup against Minnesota, 29 fantasy points. I have no problem going to Carlos. Not necessarily my favorite, but we have a small slate that we're dealing with. His advanced metrics aren't that great. Uh, but the matchup is pretty good. Toronto, just a 103 ISO, 282 Woba, 83 WRC plus against left-handed pitching. They don't strike out a lot, but at the same time, he's not really striking out. I mean, it's the league average to a little bit above. His advanced metrics aren't really all that great with a 404 Sierra, but he just finds a way to get through games. He gets tons of run support. He goes deep into games, and he gets wins. Again, on a bigger site, maybe you don't want him but the matchups there and for the most part this season he has been fine just the last two bad outings and that trend could continue but this is a great spot for him to turn things around miles michael is facing cincinnati cincinnati is actually i wouldn't say better on the road but i think we inflate the great american ballpark for cincinnati because they're not really a power hitting team and a smaller park kind of hurts them a little bit because they manufacture runs they hit singles they try to uh, you know, run the bases, extend hits into doubles and triples, which you can't really do that much in Great American Ballpark. So it's not really much of a boost to them or to Michaelis. Michaelis has been fine on the season. His ERA is probably a little higher than what it should be. Doesn't really strike anybody out, which is what we really want to take advantage of with Cincinnati with the 26% K rate. He'll still get his strikeouts in this game, but mainly a grand ball pitcher going to try to go deep into the game uh, it just depends on which cincinnati shows up michael's actually been better of late than what his era suggests if you go back to may 18th he has a 298 era now he does also have a 204 babip over that strand or that run so there should be some regression and that's really a really low babip for a ground ball pitcher but he's you know, limiting hard contact. So that's probably why the bab is as low as it is. So he's doing some things right and enough things right that he has been pitching pretty well. Mainly fastball, sinker, ball pitcher. Cincinnati grades up pretty well against well, average against fastball, but top five against sinker ball pitchers, which, like I mentioned before, Cincinnati's more of a small ball team. I know we talk about Great American Ballpark, but. If there is a team that could get to Mike List and his tendency to throw ground balls, it could be Cincinnati. So I think you might consider playing them, but you could also consider rostering Miles Michaelis. Not excited about either. Michael Walker, not too much different. 
Another one of these pitchers just been around forever. It's going to be a very tough matchup against Cleveland. You really don't want to go against a team that only strikes out 18% of the time against right-handed pitching. ISO is above average. Woba is about average. I know it shows up as red, but that's all comparative. You'd like to see me a little bit higher. WRC plus, though, 106. They do score a lot of runs, and they the top of their lineup is pretty strong against right-handed pitching. I would lean more towards the stack here. But if you do go back to May 8th with Mr. Waka, 255 ERA, and again, like Miles Michaelis, a very low BABIP. So we could see some regression, and that could go in that direction. Now, his BABIP is probably going to be a little not too crazy because he does give up slightly more fly balls, but... Could see some regression there, or he could continue on to his hot streak. He is only 6,200, but do you really want to target Cleveland? I don't think you do, especially with them hitting pretty well over the last week. 260 ISO, 380 WOA, a 151 WRC+. plus. Cleveland's kind of hot, and he's not really striking out too many. Not generating a lot of swinging strikes. Maybe a little too much contact against Cleveland could be bad. Ben Lively. Another one of these just okay pitchers, kind of like Michaelis and Waka and Lively, all really not too different. He has a 303 ERA, not doing anything exceptional. The walk rate's a little high, and giving up maybe a little bit too many fly balls is really not terrible at all. Um, but he does have a matchup that is a little bit more favorable. Kansas City doesn't fare all that well against right-handed pitching. They're good. But it is not a lineup that completely terrifies you if you go through and look at the different Wobas from their starting lineup. And they've been pretty bad of late with a 25% K rate over the last week. The Woba is 225, a 39 WRC+. Plus. And if you look at Lively, in 11 of his 12 starts this season, he's allowed three runs or fewer. And the one exception is a game where he gave up four earned runs. It's not going to give you a lot of strikeouts, just four in his last game, five and two-thirds. But he does limit hits. He does limit the earned runs. So, again, these guys are all kind of the same. And they all lack a lot of upside, but they are worth considering when you look at prices. And 8300 for Ben Lively is kind of steep. 17 fantasy points, 15, 17, 22. It's okay. Again, they're all really not that much different. Not guys that I'm loving to go to. Jose Barrios, 2.1 home runs per nine since the end of April. That's not good. He's been bad in his last two games, but it was a back-to-back -back against Cleveland. Faced them two times in a row. Before that, his ERA was 293. Now his ERA is up to 343. Still pretty good in the season. Again, advanced metrics. A lot like all these other guys, not really striking out a lot of guys, not really doing a bunch of everything, but he does generate a good amount of ground balls. Now, you're not going to really roster him against the Yankees. It's way too dangerous to flirt with that. We'll look at his splits here in a second, but this is not a team that you want to target. It really isn't. Just three strikeouts in his last start, gave up five earned runs, like I mentioned, but those were back-to-backs against Cleveland. The argument for Barrios would be that because he does generate so many ground balls, he is able to eat up innings, and by eating up innings, pitching longer, he can get a couple more strikeouts because he goes an inning or two further than some of the other pitchers. Michaelis, Walker, Lively, they may not go six or seven innings. Now, Barrios probably not going to do that in this matchup. Andrew Abbott coming off a tremendous start, 10 strikeouts in his last game against Boston. Boston loves to strike out against lefties, so if you want to take that for take that with a grain of salt, that's fine. I understand. He's facing St. Louis. They don't strike out that much. Just a little bit above average or better than league average at stopping the strikeouts, but they don't hit. The lineup, there's no one there. 114 ISO, 270 Woba, 75 WRC+. Plus. Goldschmidt checks out as probably their best hitter against lefties, and he has not aged well. His numbers are not that strong this year. St. Louis has been hitting over the last week, but running into the lefty and Andrew Abbott coming off one of his best starts, you can kind of, at that 8,000 range, consider it. Abbott's kind of all over the place. Had a good game in Colorado recently. 
which is impressive. A good game against the Chicago Cubs, not really that impressive. Struggled at Milwaukee, which you would expect. Big game against Boston, which you'd expect. Here's a scary part, though. If you look at a recent game at the end of May against St. Louis, they got to him. Now, that was a month ago. Don't really like the Cardinals lineup at the moment. He's definitely someone worth considering rostering. Now, Davis Daniel is kind of the unique guy in this slate. But you're gonna, we're going to play Flaherty. Now your other options are, do you take one of these average pitchers who you know, walk a – I think you should take him off the board against Cleveland. Barrios, take him off the board against the Yankees. So it's really down to Lively and Michaelis, and I just don't see much upside with either of them. Abbott has the upside, but also could get blown up pretty easily. So then you've got Davis – Daniel, the minor league kid getting called up. His strikeout rate is very strong in the minors. ZRA, not so much, but we do have to note that he does pitch in the PCL, so that's going to be a bit of a problem for ERA. Last three starts in the minors, eight strikeouts in each game. And the background of him was that you know, he Kind of was a hot prospect, got drafted, went to college instead, and then immediately had Tommy John surgery. Then throughout the minors, he's been battling injuries. Seems to be healthy now. I don't think he's going to be an elite stud, but he is facing a Detroit team that strikes out 24% of the time. ISO is not really a worry. Woba, 299. Detroit, just a 93 WRC+. Plus. You're not going to get the win because Flaherty is more than likely going to get the win. But at 6,000, there is strikeout upside with Davis Daniel. And that's probably where I would go. I don't think you can look much into his stats, but you can look at those minor league numbers. So for me, it's Flaherty and it's going to be Davis Daniel as the pitchers that I want roster. If we want to look here at some splits for these pitchers, like the target wise, Michaelis, not the worst against lefties. Walker, not the worst against lefties, but also holding it down pretty strongly against righties. Lively has a bit of an issue with right-handed bats, so you may want to consider some righties versus him. And the Royals lineup, we go back over to it. 1.6 home runs for nine, 350 Woba. The place that you probably are staring at, though, on the screen is Barrios versus left-handed pitching, so or left-handed bats from the Yankees. 1.9 home runs per nine, 4.67 xFIP. That is a direction that you'd want to go into. And then you could consider righties from St. Louis if they could just hit, but they don't hit. And these Abbott numbers, you would think all oh, those are inflated because he pitches at Great American Ballpark. Actually, his splits between Great American Ballpark and on the road are pretty much the same. It doesn't make any sense, but for whatever reason, Andrew Abbott is not a worse pitcher in Cincinnati. He's the same guy. He blows up on the road. He blows up at home. He can be good at home. He can be good on the road. So those numbers aren't really that inflated. If you got a right-handed bat, you want to take a chance on, they'll be affordable from St. Louis, then that would be the target. So again, it's Flaherty and Davis Daniel for me. Maybe I'm crazy, but I like the savings, and that'll allow me to get to New York bats pretty easily. That'll allow me to get to some Cleveland bats pretty easily. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully this was helpful. Trips of Life, fantastic.